On today's show, is Denver just that good? What did we see in the Denver versus Minnesota game? Plus, why are the Mavericks so good all of a sudden? We'll talk about all that and more on today's Locked On NBA. Let's go. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, you are locked on to the NBA. My name is Nick Angstead, host of the Lockdown Mavericks Podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show and making Lockdown NBA your first listen today. Where the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day on any podcast platform, like the video on YouTube, and comment anything below. Let us know, is Denver, Boston, is that going to be the finals, or do you think it's going to be somebody else? Let us know in the comment section. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $100, $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown to get started. And joining me, as always, on a Thursday, host of Lockdown Bulls, throwing it off the backboard to himself. What you got for me, Pat, the designer? (laughs) It's so refreshing watching regular teams play (laughs) basketball. Like, I just... These teams can defend and score on the other (laughs) I mean, listen, you don't jump into each other. There's no like Diddy party references based on your alley oops. Hey, you know I mean, like hey, it's, it's, it's nice. Hey. It's nice. We'll talk about the Dallas Mavericks. They made a big turnaround recently. Got a win against the Miami Heat. We'll talk about the Mavs turnaround and all that. And of course, you know, we're going to play Count It Up where we count out the most interesting, fun things in the NBA, including Doc Rivers with another, another banger quote. Gotta love Doc. <laughs> And more. We'll talk about all that in Count It Out. But let's start here, Pat. The battle of the potential number one seeds in the West. You get Denver versus Minnesota. You get the Jokic versus Gobert. You get Jamal Murray versus Anthony Edwards. A great matchup. And honestly, until about the six minute and 40, well, until about like the five minute mark in the fourth quarter, it was a really good hard fought defensive game. And then the Nuggets just like turned it on. They flipped the switch. And I saw a lot of people talking about this after the game, but they flipped the switch much like great teams in the past have your, your golden state warriors, your, yeah. you know, teams that just all of a sudden the Miami heat with the, with the big three, where all of a sudden you just go, Hey guys, guess what? Like let's win the game. Now let's go, let's go win this game. And they score on 10 straight possessions in that fourth quarter and Denver, their offense just took over against the number one defense in the NBA in the Timberwolves and the Timberwolves offense just could not keep up in any way. Yeah. And I mean, listen, I, I think it really comes down to Nikola Jokic just being fearless going into the hole all night. I mean, you would think a team that had Rudy Gobert would have a big man thinking twice about, all right, maybe I'm not going to try and lay it up. This is kind of something where I need to try and dunk this down. Not at all. Jokic going in there, attacking no. Rudy Gobert all <laughs> night. I think that defensively it threw him off his game, kind of finishing this game out. Rudy didn't play got awful all night but it was yeah like no. when when they decided we're gonna turn this on now um it, that really was a big part of we're killing the spirit of this defense how the heck do we stop Nikola Jokic then when you add into that right Ryan Braun's uh, Ryan Brown's fr- flying all over the court Ryan Braun I, I went Pause. baseball on y'all Pause. sorry Christian Brown is flying all <laughs> over the court it's Wait, the letter just wrong it's on both Braun, names dog. it's Braun <laughs> Christian Brown flying all over the court. Who would have thought that we'd be in an era of basketball where you just got white guys flying all over the court? Hey, let's go. Let's go. Shout out to you guys, man. Another win for us. Two two top MVP candidates and the high flyer of the night is uh, all three are white guys. I mean, you can't go wrong. No, no. Hey, dare I, I dare I say? We're back, baby. We're no, back. We're back, baby. Yeah. Not not since Larry Bird and JJ Redick in college have we been this back. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm not gonna lie to you. It is hilarious to watch it at times because it's just like they're really unstoppable, though. Like this Denver team, how they move, <laughs> how they how they feed they off of each other with with everything that goes into it. I mean, you also got a half with Michael Porter Jr. in there. Okay, I'm done. Uh, like like how he was able <laughs> to just get the shots up and and just be that guy on cue when you needed him to. Like, I just think this Denver team is a complete team, and they really showed the dominance versus something that felt neck and neck all the way until they said, all right, it's time to put them away. Like, this run is so impressive to me. Timberwolves, best defense in the NBA, best half-court defense in the NBA, which is usually a good playoff indicator. Like, oh, this team can do really good things in the, in the playoffs. 
Six minutes, 44 seconds left in the game. Uh, starting at, at this run. This is basically when the Nuggets go on their run to win the game. Jokic gets a free throw jumper off of Murray Drive. 6.08. Michael Porter Jr. gets a pull-up jumper off a of Jokic screen. Minnesota calls a timeout because they're like, oh, no. They can just see it coming. Then 5.33. Murray gets a floater off of a Jokic pick and roll. Then five, uh, 4.50. Jokic gets a post spin off of Gobert where it just didn't yeah. even matter that he was standing behind him. Four minutes. Jokic hits Braun on the back door and one on that huge dunk. And then uh, four minutes, Jokic drive, fouled, hits one of the free throws. Uh, then Anthony Edwards fouls on the jump ball, more free throws. And then the huge uh, Bron- Christian Brown dunk over Gobert where he switched hands midair, which when Minnesota was pressuring him full court because they were like, hey, we can't go back to our number one in the NBA half court offense. We've got to pressure you full court. Yeah. And instead, the Nuggets were like, all right, well, we'll just kick ahead a couple times and our second year white guy will just dunk with, with, with both of his hands and switch hands in midair on Gobert and make him so angry. He was so mad after that yeah. dunk. But yeah. then it's just, and you just see, like, I think you see in that whole sequence, the reason why I read it out is because you see how many different ways they can beat you and how many different things. It's not just one. Aaron Gordon was not even mentioned in that. KCP was not even mentioned in that because they weren't even playing. Yeah. They had Peyton Watson and Christian Brown out there closing the game and they can do that. And I think that's when you look at it from the Denver side, I still ask everybody, okay, how do you figure out how to beat them? Because you name all of those other names that get involved in there. And then during that final run, if you want to, it's literally an, if you want to, Oh yeah, we got the seven foot guy that passes like the best passer in the NBA. He rebounds like the best rebounders in the NBA and he can score at will on one of the best defenders in the NBA. So if we need somebody to bail us out, we also can go to Nikola Jokic and just dominate. And I think that's one thing that when you look at Minnesota, they really were missing down this final stretch. I'm sorry, in a fourth quarter of a game this big that clearly you felt was this big because of how you were playing in the first three and a half quarter, three and a half uh, uh, quarters there. Anthony Edwards, you can't not be shooting. Anthony yeah. Edwards, there's not enough offense on this team for you to be the third highest uh, shot attempt in that fourth quarter. Like Nas Reed led that team in shot attempts in the fourth quarter. He ended up put up putting up five. In the game. He ended up going one for five. You, you can't do that. Yeah, the, my questions about Denver were kind of answered in this. <laughs> my, my one question was going to be like, can they get one more contributor? My questions for Minnesota now are, are there's a bunch, and it's, you know, can their half-court offense, they're 12th in the NBA in half-court offense, just above Atlanta and Miami, which is not where you want to be necessarily. And they they get Cat returning soon. Is that going to be enough? But to me, like in this game, yeah, Anthony Edwards, if you want to be that guy, if you want to talk the talk, and we all love the, we're going to we're going to hit this. Every star player hits this like trajectory and this arc where Luca's now at the, all right, now we expect things from you. So we're all going to hate you and you're not going to get MVP votes because we expect so much more out of you. Like he's on that, that end of the arc right now. Whereas like in Anthony Edwards is at the beginning of his arc where all it's all fun and games. Like all of a sudden you're getting some, you know, you're getting some like experience and you're getting some success in the NBA. Now you're going to make the playoffs again. And you're going to, and like, you've got it. You got to get more like 25 points. 18 shots, four assists, just not enough in a game like this, especially with Carl Anthony Towns out. Where's Where are they expected to get more offense? They got it from Mike Conley, 19 points. Conley was the, the one really creating that offense for them in the half court in, in times when they can, and you just didn't get it from Anthony Edwards. And this is kind of one of those things where Anthony Edwards would be like an insanely awesome, we'd look at him as one of the best players in the NBA, like right now, the Anthony Edwards we see right now, would be looked at as one of the best players in like, the 90s or early 2000s. We're like, all right, you, you can hit jumpers. Sweet. Now, stars, you got to do everything, right? Yeah. Like, you got to be able to make every play. You've got to be able to hit every kind of shot. You've got to be able to make passes. Like, look at Luka, Jokic, I guess even SGA. Uh, like, look at all the guys that are the best in the NBA at stuff, <laughs> that are the tops of the NBA. You got to be able to solve a bunch of problems. And with Anthony Edwards, he can do a lot of great things. But it's not it's not the whole off you can't run a whole offense through him, it feels like at times. And 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 I think that's the part where it gets tough, right? I, I love Ant and I do think that Ant can be that game changer. I think more times For than sure. not, we see Ant be the guy that says, put the ball in my hands to finish out the game. But it's those moments throughout the game where the offense has to be going consistently where you don't see it. I love nine for eighteen, but I would have really loved twelve for twenty-two tonight. You know what I mean? Just give me 
you being more aggressive in the fourth quarter. Because guess what? Carl Anthony Towns coming back doesn't fix anything. This team's offensive rating with with Cat this season is 116.6. This team's offensive rating without Cat this season is 116.5. You're a middling offense no matter who you put in there. It's just the pieces that you have. But I think that you have one piece that has throughout most of the season transcended that middling par- portion of the offense because he's that good of a player, and that's Anthony Edwards. In a game this big where you're talking about locking up the number one seed, you yeah. can't sit there and disappear in a fourth quarter. That's not the Anthony Edwards that I'm used to seeing, and I think that that's, the, that's my biggest problem with him in this game. That's my biggest problem with Minnesota in this game, and maybe their biggest problem heading into the playoffs is if Ant doesn't do it, nobody else will. Uh, what's the Dion Waiters quote that I'd rather go 0 for 30 than 0 for 9? Anthony Edwards went 0 for 3 in the fourth quarter. Like, wouldn't you rather him go like 0 for 10 or 12? I'm like, hey, at least at least he went out there swinging. And it's it's swinging. the name that's on the, top, right? It's like when you look at Nas Reed being the best name, <laughs> the, the guy that took the most shots, it's like, come on, dog. Like, there's no way you can let that happen. <laughs> They may be getting Carl Anthony Towns back soon. There were there were rivaling reports between Shams and Woj. Shams said that he's expected to return in one of the team's final regular season games. And Woj said a return looms, but maybe against uh, Atlanta or Phoenix. And so we'll I see. Shams Carl and Anthony. Woj war. I know. <laughs> the protege then goes after the protege. Uh, they go, they, so we may see Carl Anthony Towns soon, but coming up, let's talk about the Dallas Mavericks. How have they made such a turnaround? How did they get this win against Miami? We'll talk about it. I'll explain. Why the Mavericks are all of a sudden a title contender. Coming to Locked On Mavs. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the type of driver that likes to go a little bit further? Check out the 2024 Nissan. Uh, check out the 2024 Nissan Rogue. They have a lineup of SUVs just like that with the capabilities to take your adventure to that next level. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect for city drives and great escapes. You got the class exclusive Google built in. It's your always updating assistant on call for almost anything. It's built right into the 12.3 inch HD touch screen infotainment system with Google Assistant, Google Maps, Google Play Store, all that stuff. Go check it out. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is the perfect mid size crossover for your next adventure. And then while you're at it, check out the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder. Room for up to eight, an extensive cargo capacity, advanced available 4x4 capability, 284 horsepower, up to 6,000 pounds of towing. And when adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada. Go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Again, shop NissanUSA.com. Thanks for hanging out with us on Locked On NBA. Being in every day or listening every day, we have a daily Locked On show that covers your team. Check the link in the description to find a show that covers your team every day. You may be watching us on the Locked On Sports Today channel. Yeah. on YouTube or Fire TV. If you're not, go check out the Locked On Sports Today channel. we got 24-7 streaming coverage of all kinds of sports, and it's it's curated. Our guy Reed curates it every day with the biggest sports stories and the national shows as well. Locked On Sports Today on Amazon Fire TV as well as on YouTube. All right, Pat, talk about the Denver Nuggets. They're very good. They pretty much locked up the one seed. Uh, who they may play in the second round if they get past. Either the Clippers or the Dallas Mavericks. Let's talk about the Dallas Mavericks. Oh boy. They get a they get a win against the Miami Heat tonight. Both teams on a second night of a back-to-back and it looked like the Heat were definitely on a second night of a back-to-back and it did not look like the Mavericks were on a second night of a back-to-back. The Mavs came out and shot insanely well in that first half. Their shot really went away from them in the third quarter and in the fourth quarter the Mavs defense just completely picked up and locked down and the Heat just couldn't do anything good on offense in the fourth quarter and they eventually waved the right white flag with like 3 minutes left. In this game, the big difference with this Dallas Mavericks team, you've got Luca and Kyrie who have been working together, playing really well together. They, you know, Luca has 29 and nine and nine tonight. Kyrie has 25 points. And you've got those two guys, obviously, but you had those two guys last year and you ended the season really badly. Their chemistry has taken up a, you know, a notch. They've gone up a level, but then you've got the Daniel Gafford, PJ Washington, Derek Jones, Jr. Dante Exum, Maxi Kleba that those five guys are so be- so much better, and even Maxi compared to last year. Those five guys are so much better defensively than anything the Mavericks had last year or even at the beginning of the season necessarily, and that has been the biggest difference. The Mavericks can lock down, and if you haven't checked in on the Mavericks in a while, they are a powerhouse defensive team now. Yeah. All of a sudden, they can defend. I saw from, from Fox Sports the other day, 
somebody on Skip Bayless' show, I think it was Keyshawn, was like, well, if, if the Maverick, the Mavericks just got to play a little defense. All right, you have not watched the Mavericks in like three <laughs> months then because you don't know anything about this team because they are no longer the, well, they just, they, we score, they score 130 on us and we have to score 135. It's, they're not that team anymore. They have completely changed. And um, I'm fascinated to see how this team is going to face it up against the Clippers because we know for sure that that's going to be their first round opponent. Uh, let's just start here. If if the, if it's Mavs Clippers, which we know it is, who would you pick in that first round matchup? You want me to leave the room for a second I, I, so you can I, like? I, no, I, I I mean listen, I I've said this multiple times. Um, my biggest fear with the Clippers is the age of the Clippers, and now when you see how Kyrie and how Luca are moving, I mean they're a younger team that gets everybody involved. And I'll say this: when you look at the Mavs right now, the one name that you brought up, former Chicago Bull, hurts me a little bit because we just I was always like, you can you can find another Daniel Gafford. We haven't found one no. since. Uh, I mean, we found like seven of them in a row, and then like Gafford was the end. We got rid of all <laughs> of them, and Gafford was the end. So you know, but it is what it was is. Was Eddie Curry the start of that? Or no, uh, Taj Gibson <laughs> probably the start of that. There we found a. I mean, Tyrus Thomas, maybe. No, I'm joking. Hayes would kill me. Uh, Taj Gibson <laughs> probably the start of that. But then we found that guy for a long time. As you can see, Daniel Gafford, a really good version of that guy. And what, and what makes it exciting for me seeing him on the Dallas Mavericks, and I've kept up with him while he's been there, is he seems to be the other consistent piece that you guys have needed just for cleanup. Like, every time I watch exactly. the Mavs now, it used to irritate me because it was like, Luka takes a shot. We'll see where it goes. Kyrie takes a shot. We'll see where it goes. There wasn't enough people down there, especially with Grant Williams, where it's like, hey, yo, you got to clean that up. You got to put that back in. You got to be able to finish that. You got to follow Luca to the bucket. That's what a pick and roll is. When I was like, I'm on the ground. How can I? How can you know I do that? Well? <laughs> <laughs> Please help me. Uh, I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> when I watch now this Dallas team having a third consistent piece that's not a high scoring piece, but shooting, I believe, seventy eight percent. Since he's been with the Dallas Mavericks, that is something right now. where you're just like, there's always that third guy I can rely on if I get into trouble. And I think that's what uh, Kyrie and Luka needed because everybody could always say, okay, yes, they're two of the toughest people to guard in the NBA, but we just got to focus on them. You can't just focus on them anymore. And that goes for a lot of this Mavericks team. I look at this game tonight and I mean... You're sitting there talking about three guys tonight, Derek Jones, P.J. Washington, Daniel Gafford, all being efficient, all running the floor really well, all playing really good defense. Dallas, to me, is a team that I think you actually have to wor worry about a little bit, and uh, they built the team well enough to uh, overcome Jason Kidd. So, you know, bravo for that. I, <laughs> I stand on my I've Jason, Jason Kidd coaching issues. I, at one point in the season, I was ready to, to move on from Jason Kidd, and I should have just given him an ultimatum instead because he he would have taken that, and he would have he's completely changed this team around, and uh, the team has really picked it up, and they've they've gelled together. The defense has really picked up, and you're completely right about Daniel Gafford. He has raised the floor of this team, where some of his best games are against the Utahs, the Charlottes, the Detroits, where you just need a guy to just go in and grab like five or six alley-oops or grab a couple of offensive rebounds. He just raises the floor for you in a way that they just haven't had since Tyson Chandler, honestly, in 2015. Like that's the last time they had a guy like yeah. this. And it, it's just been such a big boost for the Mavericks. And then to have Derek Jones Jr. Who's playing really good, per, like perimeter defense, playing really good point of attack defense and PJ Washington, who's been a much better. I thought he was going to be a good defender coming in. He's been a, such a much better defender than anybody really thought with the Mavericks. He's taking it up a level. And I think those three guys are really hungry. Derek Jones Jr. is going to be a free agent this summer. Daniel Gafford and PJ Washington have not really played on playoff teams. Gafford played on one Wizards team that made the playoffs like a couple oh, years yeah, ago with that. Brad Beal. And uh, <laughs> like they played like five games. I, I think they got, they got taken out in the first round. So, and PJ Washington's never been to the playoffs. He's been to the play-in twice and they got whooped both times. They're hungry and they want to go to that next level. Luca is hungry to try and prove himself from last season when they missed the postseason entirely. Uh, you got Dante Exum who's trying to make his way back in the NBA, and he's been awesome. He's been an amazing piece, one of the best stories in the NBA. And this team is just really coming together. And it's defense first, and then it's Luca and Kyrie just do and just do just enough to win on offense, and that has worked because those two guys are some of the best in the NBA. There's they're both averaging twenty five five and five. Do you know the only other teammates in NBA history to do that? Two, two five, sets. Five and five. Two 25, sets. five and five. Very recently. Oh, very recently. Okay. I was going to say, uh, I guess I'll still say LeBron and AD. 
They did not do it. Mm. Dort, I, I was going to say Shea and somebody, but Dort doesn't score enough. <laughs> Giddy doesn't score enough. No, it's Shea's Steph in the Curry, 30s now. Steph Curry and Kevin Durant did it tw- did it twice, 25, 5, and 5. Well, that's not that And reason. then Harden, <laughs> it's pretty real. It's like within the last five years. And then Westbrook and Harden are the other 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 two teammates to do that. These, these are the only ones to do yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, put putting up numbers, and you're talking about two championship teammates right there in Steph and, and KD. And Luka and Kyrie are doing exactly that, and it's – it's awesome to watch. They've completely changed. Like this team has transformed. I've been tra- I've been telling it, everybody. It's, it's become a team. Dallas used to feel like a one-on-one matchup every play. Now it feels like yes. with the additions that they've made, it's a team. Like it's not just I can leave a guy open in the court. My favorite thing to watch on Dallas when it would be like one-on-one and you'd be looking for that other guy was just Tim Hardaway standing in the corner by himself and everybody was like, he's out there for a reason. Like it's fine. <laughs> let, let him be there. Yeah, I mean, do, should we run out to him? Nah, he's got it. <laughs> he'll guard himself like you're not worried about that anymore now i mean like listen tim hardaway had a tim hardaway night tonight and it did not affect you he well th- they they are not live and die by the three anymore for years we were just like oh live and die by the three if the mav shot under like 36 percent from three they just didn't win games they just didn't and now they win games when they shoot under 30 percent. they beat denver recently they shot under 30 percent from three in that game didn't matter they find other ways to win and that's what's really changed about this mavericks team I love the way that they're playing right now. Go check out Locked On Mavs for more about how they're playing. But coming up, let's play Count It Up, up. where we count out the most interesting, fun things in the NBA, including Doc Rivers. He's not happy about how the the Bucs are playing. (laughs) He's not happy about anybody else. And we'll talk about that and more coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook has all kinds of props and odds that you can use to get in on the action. Check out all the stuff they have for the NBA. NHL. They've got baseball, which is in full swing right now. Are your White Sox? Your White Sox are doing you bastard stuff. They're they're playing. They're playing. <laughs> we are the second worst team in uh, New- in the sport. <laughs> New customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets, guaranteed. Win or lose, go check that out and take advantage of it. Now they have all kinds of stuff. They have the parlay builder too, which is pretty fun. NBA Finals right now. They've got Celtics plus 165. Nuggets plus 310, and then Clippers plus 850. If you believe in the Mavericks, don't take that Clippers plus 850 because they will lose in the first round. Uh, the Mavs are plus two, uh, plus 2,600. They have less. They have lower odds than the Suns, who are at plus 2,000 for the finals. So if you feel good about any of that, feel confident about all the, any of those things, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, Pat, we talked about Jokic and the Nuggets probably controlling the one seed. We've talked about Luka and Kyrie turning around the Dallas Mavericks. And now let's talk about some of our favorite things in the NBA, like... Big chicken, baby. Zion Williams and porn stuff. Take that for that. Count it up. 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 The Milwaukee Bucks have not been faring very well recently they did get a win tonight against the Orlando Magic which is a really big win for them uh but Giannis has been out with the injury they want they lost three straight games against what was it Memphis and the Wizards and somebody else ugly, yeah. a really bad. bad stretch there Doc Rivers had a quote this week he said quote I've actually been sitting back and watching everything not just our players but our travel crew everything we don't bring the necessary professionalism seriousness on the road everybody seems happy you know but except for me after our games. My question is, Count it up. why is Doc Rivers the only one not happy? And why do the Bucks, others, the people that are not players, keep catching strays from Doc and from Giannis? Remember he talked about the equipment manager earlier this year? What is going on in Milwaukee? And that, that, these, was ex- that was going to be team my, officials that was gonna be my exact point. Do what not do take, do not take the message and throw it away because of the messenger. Giannis told y'all this. Before the season started, Giannis talked about this. When we got into the season, Giannis talked about this. Now Doc Rivers is saying it, and everybody's like, well, Doc, you need to do something about it. Why don't you shut your mouth and go out there and coach? Doc is telling you exactly what your favorite player told you the entire 
time that the mindset of the team does not seem serious enough. And that goes all the way down to, as John has said, the equipment manager. Um, I, I mean, listen, that there is something to be said about that. When you look at championship teams and usually how they're run, it's usually the highest level from top to bottom. You usually don't get the like the equipment guy, and he's like, "I fold the socks." We're not back. going through. You know, okay, so I'm taking the complete opposite end of this. And why are we why are we throwing shade at these equipment managers? You want the equipment manager and everybody to be like, "Oh, we lost another game. Oh, we're just sad, and everybody's dour." And like, I mean, th- what did they do? Listen, um, are you on the team? Do you do fold the draws? Do they get a ring? Do, do, do they get a ring? They do. Yeah, I mean, you, do you fold the draw the draws at the end of the day? If you fold the draws, you on the team. You the most personal person on this team. Yeah, I mean, like you gotta. And I'm not saying that you gotta be sitting there soaking. I get it. Like there, there's a limit to it, but there is a level that you're supposed to do things when you're a championship organization. I think Giannis's biggest complaint, which is now Doc's complaint, is <laughs> why is everybody like okay with us being 15 and 15? Because li- everybody else is everybody else is living their dreams. Even the NBA players living their dreams. Enjoy. <laughs> life all you can oh they're just happy to be here i guess that's that's your that's your vibe with it this week chicago bull tory craig oh, you best. <laughs> took us took a steal in transition threw the ball off the backboard to himself and andre drummond thought it was for him they caught it together in midair and they missed the dunk. The screenshot of Tory Craig's face when he realized Andre Drummond was also catching up to the ball is one of the most amazing things I've seen. I got it for you. Don't, don't worry. Yeah, you can see it. he had it right on his desktop. You can see it on YouTube right now. This picture of Tory Craig's just wide eyes like, oh no. And Andre the Drummond part is, like, is look at Kobe White's face. <laughs> look at Kobe just like, what are we doing right now? Look at Boyan Bogdanovich, like right behind them for the Knicks. Like <laughs> this, put, this face is literally, I don't even know what you're counting up is off of this dog, but this face is literally like, I bet you're wondering how I got here. Well, for that, <laughs> before we get to that, I got to take you way back. <laughs> my God. Uh, my counted up was not going to be as good as that. So I'll just, we'll just leave it. <laughs> what, what was the counted up? Not, not I'm intrigued. All right, here we go. Count it up. Is this a metaphor for the Bulls season? <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely. Because what's good thing, good thing about to happen, their own player coming from behind ready to and, dunk and, it. It's and like, honestly, it, it, it truly is because me and Hayes talked about this over on Locked On Bulls. What's sad about this team is we were never out of this game. It's not like the Bulls were getting blown <laughs> out. Like they could have won this game. But every single time they did something good, they did two things to shoot themselves in the foot. This is absolutely the perfect metaphor for this team. I think it epitomizes Jerry Reinsdorf teams in general. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like this, yeah, I mean, you look at the White Sox 2 and 10 right now. Like this is the perfect meme for every Jerry Reinsdorf team in the city. Wembenyama got his logo revealed by Nike this week during the eclipse where they revealed it in a yeah. crop circle video. And it's uh, an alien head in the middle of a basketball. You've probably seen it by now. It looks amazing. My question is, Count it up. is this the best NBA player logo that we have? Because I think, it, I really think that it is. Are we talking coolest or like iconic wise? Like best. I mean, you're not going to beat Jordan. That one has just become never going to be Jordan. It's become its own logo, but like, the KD one with the K and the D, they're all just they're all just initials next to each other. Uh, you've got the. Are we just uh, talking like the, current NBA players? Sure, current NBA players. You got okay, Dame with I, like the wings on the wings on the D. Either. Steph Curry's is like a thirty with like that looks like S and C. Yeah, the Mamba one is pretty good. Yeah, I the, I the, think the this Kawhi one, one is like the hand with, with the hand with the the K and the L in it. Now that one's pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie at that one either. The the claw one is pretty cool, but I mean the shoe company that he's with is not. Um I I think he's got the Kyrie one, which is like the K with the I like down the middle with two I lines. Like the Kyrie one. Here's the tough part about it though. We won't know until we see it on shoes. This looks great in crop circles, but like I was like, I like this logo, but what is this gonna look like if it's like slapped on the side of my shoe? Yeah, not not many are circles, right? 
I, not that I, I mean, I think that doesn't Steph have like a circle in it or something like that, where it's like the, the 30 has no, like, it's the like, a, it's well, it's the, it's a 30, but it's also like a SC. So the, the, the yeah, open. I don't Anthony know. Anthony Edwards is just like an A with, that looks like it has a tree in the middle of it. I think this is probably the most creative one we've seen in a while. I think so. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm, I'm here for the logo. I just really want to see how it looks on the shoe. Like, there is a look, right? Like, the 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 King James one, right? Or the, uh, or I, I'll say I really like how the Kyrie logo looks on the shoe itself. Yeah. Like, I'm really trying to picture, like, you slap this alien head on my shoe. Is it like, do I look like a um, big circle? Yeah, I mean, like, it, does it, is it going to look as cool on the is shoe? It, Are you going to give me weird colorways with this as well? I don't need weird yeah, I mean, give me regular colorways. I don't need like yellow and green. It's like it's alien colors. Like you never seen an alien. <laughs> there's also there, there's so many logos right now that are just initials like mashed together, and we haven't had a a, a logo that's not that in a while. And I think there's a V and a W in this Wembenyama one, but it's not like that's the only thing that it is. Uh, there's not many players logos that are like silhouettes. It's Jordan, it's Shaq, and then like Dirk never really had one, but he would. They've got his silhouette like on the court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the Mavs court. But yeah, I, I like the I like the logo. I love the way that they revealed it. I think it's I think it's a good logo. And I'm glad that he got it because uh yeah, I'm interested to see how it looks on shoes and on on stuff too. But I think there you what's go. So interesting That's, is if you look okay. at some of these logos, it's like whose logo is that? <laughs> it's like <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember ever seeing that. Is was that with a Chinese shoe brand out here? <laughs> like the the James Harden logo is just like an H. Yeah, but like there's one on here. Like it's it's a it's a Pegasus. Like I would assume this has to be Jokic's shoe of some sort. It's just a horse with wings. Like I don't know whose logo this is. No, Jokic's is like the the Joker hat that has like a. Okay, so that I I went Jokic likes horses. I would assume he's a horse guy. I mean, I have no idea whose logo this is. What are you talking about? Horse logo. I just looked up NBA horse logo and it gave me Mavericks logos. That's not what I want. There's a Nike shoe. It literally just looks like a Pegasus logo. And or maybe it's a dragon. Maybe maybe it's dragon. Are we going dragon on that? It's just like did Dragic get a shoe and we missed it? This is amazing. <laughs> did, this is amazing podcasting, by the way. Yeah, we you can't see any of this. Google this and follow <laughs> along with us google this and just follow along with us on I this i think one, pegasus guys. is just like their running shoes i don't think this is basketball shoes what well, it's for basketball i googled all the basketball play i don't know it doesn't matter um yes Wemby uh cooks all of these logos uh because i can't even identify like this the cp3 one's got to be the weakest one someone at home is screaming like pegasus logo what are you talking about <laughs> Yeah, it's just Either it's Pegasus just a C a with the P, and then the it makes a three in the middle. Yeah, that one's weird. But there you go. That's Jokic in the Nuggets. That's Dallas Mavericks with Luka Doncic, and that's counted up this week, guys. Thanks so much for listening to Locked on NBA. Bye bye. Boom. Now, if you Google this and you look up that, and you can see in the podcast, I totally could have just put it on the screen that you're listening to.